Hello everyone and welcome back to the next installment of our 10.2 raid guides, proudly presented by Kingston Fury. This is Crazy Puck from Method and today we'll show you how to defeat Laridar in Mythic and Mirdrasil. For all of our Mythic videos, we'll assume you know the fight and its mechanics on heroic difficulty. As such, these videos will show you the Mythic mechanics and focus on the strategy to defeat the Mythic version of the encounter. If you need a refresher on any of the baseline heroic abilities, check out the heroic guide for the encounter on our channel. For this fight, we recommend 2 tanks, 4 healers, and 14 DPS, and popping Bloodlust at the start of the intermission. Like all bosses, Lyrodar gets a few new mechanics for Mythic. They don't particularly impact strategy all that much compared to Heroic, but just give you a couple more things to think about. First up is Everlasting Blaze. This is a debuff applied by the crit buff orbs that causes subsequent orb soaks to deal 250% increased damage to you. You'll get 5 of those orbs each time the boss casts Blazing Thorns, so you'll need 5 soakers each time. These debuffs do not expire, so you'll want to assign soakers or just use a weak order to assign soakers, spreading out the stacks of the buff. You'll want to plan for roughly 7 casts of thorns, meaning 35 total debuffs. That's 2 stacks for just about everyone in the raid. Each player will want to use a personal when soaking their second orb, and probably some type of major, personal, or even an immunity if they have to soak a third or more. Remember, if any of the orbs reach the boss, he gets the buff, and that can just wipe you. So it'll take a little bit of work and some practice, but preventing these orbs from reaching the boss is vital. Also, as a note, the exact formation of the thorns, and therefore the orb spawn locations, is based on where the boss is facing when he completes the Blazing Thorns cast. So, if you're assigning people with, say, front right, front left, right, left, and back, those directions should be based on what direction the boss himself faces when the thorns come out. This can be very confusing, and it'll take a little bit for your team to get used to it. The next change in phase 1 is igniting growth. This happens about 15 seconds in, then shortly after each subsequent set of ads. This ability tosses a debuff on the entire raid that drops blazing ground goop puddles every second for 15 seconds from each player. You'll want the entire raid to stack on the tank and keep the puddles together. Follow the tank around, dropping puddles along the existing goop puddles on the group. The better that you are keeping the new goop puddles together, the more space you'll have to work with the rest of the phase and the easier it'll be for your seeds team to clear it. Speaking of seeds, the last phase one changes how the seed of life works. Instead of being a free-for-all like on Heroic, Mythic requires much more coordination. The seed requires three people working together. One clicks the seed, the next touches player one, and the last touches player two. This third player then gets to spray green goop to clear the fire puddles on the ground. You'll need to move together because if these linked players get too far away from each other, the link breaks. Once your link breaks, you get a debuff preventing you from being part of the seed chain for three minutes, so handling this group movement well is really important. You'll want to pre-assign your three seed groups with each one going after a set of trances killed and healed up. Use as much of the seed's charge as you possibly can and clear as much space as you can. To help the seed groups be a little bit more effective, you'll want to nuke the trance as quickly as possible. We recommend having a player or two in a burst AoE spec. Marksmanship Hunter is amazing for this. Blowing up the trance quickly means the healers can heal them sooner, which will in turn get the seed more charge, letting your seed teams clear more of the fire on the ground. There's a couple of other things to be aware of in Phase 1. The Furious Charge overlaps with Igniting Growth. One tank needs to take the charge, ensuring the boss goes away from where the raid is moving. Just aim him out into Narnia in the fire and be safe with it. Next up is Scorching Roots. The roots become attackable when they're sprayed by the green group from the seed team. You'll generally want the player being fixated by the roots to run towards the boss and then have the seed folks hit it. Spawning the attackable roots near the boss helps with cleave, which also helps reduce downtime when you need to hide during the Raging Inferno cast. We recommend having healers use externals to heal up the roots as quickly as possible each time, just to make sure that you're never late and wipe to Raging Inferno. You'll rinse and repeat this until either the boss hits 35% health or finishes the third Raging Inferno cast, both of which will trigger the brief intermission before phase two. This hurts way more than on Heroic, which is why we recommend using Bloodlust during this intermission to help with the healing. 
You'll also want to make sure the healers are using a cooldown or two here to keep everybody stable. Once it ends, you enter phase two. And here, there's a couple of new mechanics. Ashen Devastation puts marks on a few players for eight seconds. When this expires, it explodes, dealing damage to the raid based on distance. Your targeted players need to move as far away as they can. Tankier players that have this, especially someone with a really strong personal cooldown, can actually run into the fire just to get a little bit further away from the raid and reduce the overall AoE damage. Smoldering Backdraft is a tank smack frontal, dealing massive damage to anybody hit. It also applies a debuff that ticks for damage every second and reduces healing received by 100% for 30 seconds on that tank. This will put a small circle on the tank. Standing inside your tank circle leeches health from you to heal them. You'll need melee players to take turns standing in the tank circle to heal them up. However, being leeched off applies a debuff to you, increasing the damage you take per tick from the leech by 5% per stack. Because of this, you'll need the melee rotating in and out as your stacks drop. Don't get your stacks too high or you'll actually just kill yourself. Aside from the new mechanics, you'll handle the rest of phase two like heroic. Use CCs to keep the adds outside of the area. If any make it into the open area, use knockbacks or grips to get them on top of the boss and killed as soon as possible. You don't really have a lot of room in phase two and you need to conserve it as much as possible. Make sure you soak the falling embers, dodge tornadoes, and ensure the ash and devastation targets get as far away as possible. Phase 2 is just an all out nuke. Melt the boss's face and collect your sweet epics. If you enjoyed this guide, remember to like it and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to catch all of our previews, guides, kill videos, and more. A big thank you again to Kingston Fury for making guides like these possible. From everyone here at Method, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.